So today's lesson is a continuation on our study about polynomials. Today we're going to talk about how to add polynomials, subtract, and multiply, and also discuss what their degrees are. So first of all, we need to step back and understand what a monomial is, because a polynomial is an expression that's made up of monomials added or subtracted together. So that term monomial means that it has one term to it. Now, what makes up a monomial could be a number, just a number could be a monomial, just a variable could be a monomial, or a product of numbers and variables, like negative 5 times x squared times y, or now this looks like it's division C divided by 3, but in reality that's 1 third times C. So it's still considered multiplication, as long as we're not dividing by that variable. That's still a product of a number and variables. So these are all examples of what a monomial looks like. So on our next screen, I have a whole bunch of different expressions and we wanna classify them and talk about why they are a monomial or why they are not. So our very first one here, one over d. So because we are dividing by the variable, I'm going to classify that as not a monomial. You cannot divide by the, by the variable. You can divide a variable by a number, but not divide by a variable. So when I have y to the negative 3, remember we just got done studying that y to the negative 3 is the same thing as 1 divided by y cubed. So for that reason, I'm going to make that not a monomial because of that negative exponent. Because if you recall, that negative exponent would be the same as writing this as y, 1 over y cubed. So we're going to classify that as not a monomial. Now if I look at negative 3x, I have a number multiplied to a variable that goes into monomials. Here I have x divided by 2. I'm not dividing by the variable. I'm taking the variable and cutting it in half. So I'm going to count that as a monomial. Again, I can write that as 1 half times x. Therefore, it counts as a monomial. Right here I have 3m plus 2n. As soon as I have addition, it's no longer a monomial. That falls into a polynomial, but it has two terms, so it cannot fall into a monomial. If I have 4a to the third power, that is just a product of a number and variables. That's going to go into monomials. Negative 5 by itself, one term goes into monomials. This next one, I have 3 divided by 2x. Remember, I can't do division of a variable. That is not a monomial. In this one, I have the square root of 3x. As soon as I apply a square root, it is not a monomial. And my last one, I have 7x squared y cubed. It is a product of numbers and variables. This lands into the monomial category. So I hope that differentiates what is classified as a monomial and what is not. So now we're going to dig deeper and we're going to talk about a polynomial. So the prefix poly simply means many. So when we're talking about a polynomial, it means many terms. Now it doesn't necessarily have to have many terms. It could be small as having one and be a monomial. Two terms, now when I separate terms in a polynomial, I separate them with addition and subtraction. So you can see a monomial plus another monomial makes a binomial or it's two terms. A trinomial obviously would have three terms, one, two, three terms. And anything beyond that we simply call polynomials. Now these all fall into the polynomial category, but if it has one term, two terms, or three terms, we give it a special name. All right, now 
we need to talk about what the degree is. Now remember that a degree is a measurement. So we measure degrees in temperatures of how hot or cold it is. We, in geometry, we use degrees to measure how big our angle is. In algebra, we use degrees to measure how large our polynomials are. So the degree of the polynomial comes from the exponent in the monomials of the polynomial. So for an example, when you learned in geometry that when you calculate area, you calculate that in square feet. When you get to square feet, that's recognizing the degree of your problem. When you looked at volume in geometry, we looked at it in cubic feet. The cubic feet explain to us the dimensions of our problems, the same way that the degree and is going to show us, or the exponent in the polynomial is going to show us the degree of the polynomial. So if I have, for instance, 3x cubed plus 2x plus 5, I would look individually for the degree. So the degree of the first term is a 3, the degree of the second term is a one, and the degree of the third term would be a zero. But the degree of this polynomial would be a three. You take the highest degree of any monomial within the polynomial. Now, if I had a polynomial that had more than one variable in it, as such, what I simply do is I add the sum of the exponents, just like I were multiplying those together. So the degree of this first term would be five, the degree of this second term would be two, and the degree of this third term would be one. But the degree of the entire polynomial is simply five. All right, now today we're also going to simplify these polynomials. Now we're going to simplify by adding, subtracting, and multiplying today. But that simply means to perform operations indicated and combine all of your like terms. So for today, we're going to, like I said, we're going to add, we're going to subtract, and we're going to multiply. And we will be in the near future dividing our polynomials as well. All right, so let's look at these two examples. It says determine if each expression is a polynomial. Remember that a polynomial is only made up of monomials. So if it breaks the monomial rules, then it is not a polynomial. So look at A. I have c to the fourth minus four square roots of c plus 18. Now remember that a square root cannot be a monomial, so this one does not classify as a polynomial. My second example, I have negative 16p to the fifth, that's okay. I have 3 fourths p squared q to the seventh, and that's okay. So we want to find the degree. So this one is a polynomial, and I need to find the degree. So I'm going to find the degree of each term. So the degree of the first term is 5, and the degree of the second term would be 2 plus 7, or 9. So I take the highest degree to find the degree of the polynomial, and that would be 9. It's not a sum of all. It's the sum of the highest. All right, so now we are ready to simplify. In this problem, I need to collect my like terms. So you can see that I have a trinomial, and I'm subtracting another trinomial from it. So what I have to do first, because this is subtraction, is I have to distribute that negative to every term inside of this grouping. Now as I do that, I'm going to start collecting my like terms. So the first term is going to become a negative a cubed. Well, I'm going to come over here and group that with a 2a cubed. The second term I'll have a minus a negative 3a. That's going to become a plus 3a and a minus a positive 2 becomes negative 2. So now I can collect my like terms. 
I have 2a cubed minus a cubed leaves me with 1a cubed. 5a plus 3a is 8a. And negative 7 minus 2 is negative 9. So this is my simplified version. a cubed plus 8a minus 9 after I collect my like terms. Now for my second example here, it is simply addition. So I don't have to worry about changing any signs. I just need to collect my like terms. So I have a 4x squared and a negative 2x squared, a negative 9x and a negative 5x, a negative 7 and a negative 6. Now we'll go ahead and collect those like terms. 4x squared minus 2x squared gives me 2x squared. Negative 9x minus 5x is negative 14x. And negative 7 minus 6 more is negative 13. So I ended up with 2x squared minus 14x minus 3 as my polynomial. So that is an example with subtraction and addition. Let's look at multiplication. So for this example, I need to take negative y times the polynomial 4y squared plus 2y minus 3. Now for this example, you'll recall the distributive property. Now the distributive property here is so important because I need to take that negative y times everything inside. So I'm going to start with negative y times 4y squared. So these are our rules that we practice for the last several days. That would give me a negative 4y. Now that this is to the first power times y to the second power, I'll repeat the base and add my exponents. Then I'm ready to move to my second term. Negative y times a positive 2y is going to give me negative 2y squared. And my last term will be negative y times negative 3 or a positive 3y. Now I look to make sure that I don't have any like terms that I can add or subtract and I don't. So this is my final answer. If we write that all in one color. That's negative 4y cubed minus 2y squared plus 3y. So it makes it look as if it's the same polynomial. All right, one more example with multiplication. Now you can see that I'm multiplying two polynomials together. The first one being a trinomial and the second one being a binomial. So I'm still going to use the distributive property, but I have to be very careful because I have to distribute more than once. Now one thing about multiplication is that multiplication is commutative, so you can change the order. If you'd like to move this around and put the a plus 2 first, you can do that. I'm just going to leave it as is and go ahead and distribute. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute the a squared through. So that's going to be a squared times a, which gives me a cubed. And then I'll take a squared times 2, and that gives me plus 2a squared. Now I need to distribute the 3a. So I'm going to take 3a times a, and that's going to give me a 3a squared. Now I'm going to write it right under here so I can collect my like terms as I go. Then I'll take 3a times 2 and that gives me 6a. And then last, I'll have negative 4 times a, which is going to give me negative 4a, and negative 4 times 2, which is a negative 8. Now I'm ready to add all of those together. And as I went, I collected my like terms, so they're ready to go. So I have 1a cubed plus 5a squared plus 2a minus 8. So I end up with a polynomial with four terms and that polynomial has a degree of 3.
All right, so you're going to practice some more addition, subtraction, and multiplication today. Look for your assignment on Google Classroom.